This is a three-part tutorial using FLAC 2D to calculate the total and effective stresses in water flow for a two-dimensional analysis of a homogeneous embankment dam. This initial analysis is a frequent problem encountered in dam engineering and one that can be solved in a relatively straightforward manner in FLAC 2D. Please note that the model developed was selected to have less than 1,000 numerical zones and therefore can be completed using the free demonstration mode version of FLAC 2D available. In part one of this tutorial, the total stresses due to gravity were calculated. In this tutorial, part two, the pore water pressures in the embankment, and in particular point A, will be calculated as well as the water flow entering the drain. Please note that in this video, the individual steps are briefly discussed and outlined, after which the actual execution of the steps in FLAC 2D are provided. The directions provided in this tutorial assume that the analysis from tutorial one is complete, but that the files from this tutorial have not yet been reopened. To begin, open FLAC 2D. If the FLAC 2D startup window is shown, click Open Project, or if the startup window is not shown, click File, and then Open Import. Navigate to the correct project, and then click Open. To the left, the vertical project plane lists the data files, plots, save states, and sketch sets. In terms of plotting, if the desire was to view a contour plot from tutorial 1, for example the vertical effect of stress, this could be accomplished by clicking 1 underscore static analysis dot sav and double clicking 2 underscore esyy. If, on the other hand, it is desired to view a data file, for example the commands for tutorial 1, then simply double click 1 underscore static analysis dot dat. At this stage, we are now going to create a second data file that will contain the commands to conduct a steady state seepage analysis so that the pore water pressures and water flow in the embankment can be calculated. To create a new data file, click the down arrow to the right of one underscore static analysis. Next, click New, and then Data File. Name the data file two underscore seepage analysis dot dat. Click New. As mentioned in tutorial 1, FLAC 2D uses commands that are contained within data files to control the analysis and does not have a graphical user option like FLAC 8.1. For more information and discussion on FLAC 2D commands, please see the tutorial 1 video. It is now time to place the FLAC 2D commands in the data file 2 underscore seepage analysis. These commands will be presented next with customized syntax highlighting and figures to help connect FLAC 2D commands to the analysis problem. The first command will be model restore one underscore static analysis dot sav so that the save state that was solved in tutorial one is restored. Next we specify the fluid constitutive model for the embankment. For this analysis the anisotropic fluid constitutive model will be used for the embankment zones. This option will be specified with the zone fluid C model anisotropic range group embankment command. The range group embankment part of the command allows us to specify the anisotropic fluid constitutive model for the embankment only. In this analysis, since all zones are embankment, this additional part of the command is unnecessary, but included here to highlight the use of the range group command. The fluid related properties of the soil include the porosity as well as the permeability. In terms of porosity, the value will not be explicitly specified, but instead the default value of 0.5 will be used. In terms of permeability, the mobility coefficient in the horizontal and vertical directions is what is required to be specified in FLAC. The mobility coefficient is equal to the Darcy's velocity divided by the unit weight of water. Based on the value specified in this problem statement, the horizontal and vertical mobility coefficients are equal to 7.21 times 10 to the minus 10 feet per pounds per feet squared times seconds and 2.56 times 10 to the minus 10 feet per pound per feet squared time seconds, respectively. These parameters are specified in FLAC 2D using the zone fluid property permeability dash xx 7.21 e to the minus 10 permeability dash yy 2.56 times 10 to the minus 10 
range, group, embankment command. The next fluid-related properties to be specified is the fluid density, which is 1.94 slugs per cubic foot for this problem, and specified using the zone water density, 1.94 range, group, embankment command. We now specify the boundary conditions associated with fluid flow. Boundary conditions include the applied pore water pressures along the slope due to the reservoir and the impacts of the drain on the embankment. For the embankment drain interface, the pore water pressure will be set to zero pounds per feet squared. The embankment drain interface lies along the base two edge type group and the pore water pressure equal to zero can be specified simply as zone face apply pore dash pressure 0, 0.0 range group base two. Along the upstream slope, the maximum value of pore water pressure occurs at the upstream toe and is equal to the height of the reservoir water times the unit weight of water. With a height of water of 60 feet, the maximum pore water pressure is equal to 3,744 pounds per feet squared. With the pore water pressure changing by negative 62.4 pounds per feet squared per foot as we move vertically upwards. The portion of the upstream slope in which the pore water pressure acts corresponds to the upstream one edge type group. To specify variation of pore water pressure along this edge type group, the following command is used. Zone face apply pore dash pressure 3744.0 gradient 0 comma minus 62.4 range group upstream one. In tutorial one, the embankment was dry with the degree of saturation equal to zero. For the steady state seepage analysis in this tutorial, the degree of saturation could be reinitialized. For example, one possibility would be to have the embankment as fully saturated, that is saturation equal to one, except the interface along the drain, which would be dry, saturation equal to zero. Such a condition could be specified as zone grid point initialize, saturation 1.0, range group embankment, followed by zone grid point initialize saturation 0, 0.0 range group base two. In this tutorial, however, it was found that a more accurate representation of the expected phreatic surface was found without reinitializing the saturation. And therefore these two commands were omitted. The remaining two parameters that will be specified are the fluid bulk modulus and fluid tension. The fluid bulk modulus of the water is two times 10 to the nine newtons per meter squared or in imperial units, 4.2 times 10 to the seven pounds per feet squared. Note that using the real value of the fluid bulk modulus is necessary with modifications for stiffness ratio for problems in which changes in volumetric strain are important, such as modeling liquefaction. However, when modeling the steady state seepage problem in this tutorial, a much smaller value of the fluid bulk modulus can be used that will still achieve the solution while also taking less time to compute. Specifically in this tutorial, a value of the fluid bulk modulus of 100 pounds per feet squared will be used. This value of fluid bulk modulus is specified in the analysis using the command zone grid point initialize fluid modulus 100 range group embankment. Next, a decision needs to be made on the value of fluid tension. In this analysis, the ability of soil to sustain fluid tension will be neglected by specifying a fluid tension equal to zero. Otherwise, the default value of minus 10 raised to the power 15 will be used. The command zone grid point initialize fluid tension 0.0, .0 range group embankment will be utilized to specify a fluid tension of zero. We are now almost ready to conduct the analysis. An uncoupled analysis will be conducted in which steady state seepage will be determined without changes in effective stress. This analysis setting is achieved with the following commands. One, model fluid active on to turn on fluid flow calculations, and two, model mech active off to turn off mechanical calculations. It is now time to solve for steady state seepage. This fluid flow equilibrium state will be achieved through cycling to a convergence limit, here defined as a fluid convergence ratio of one times 10 to the minus three. The command to achieve this condition is model solve ratio dash flow 1.0 e to the minus three. The last command in the file is model save to underscore seepage analysis dot sav and will ensure that the solution results are saved in a new save state here called to underscore seepage analysis dot sav. The set of commands discussed previously will now be shown in the data file in FLAC 2D. Once the set of commands has been typed, click the green arrow or simply click control E. 
you will see a cycling info dialog box open that presents the results during cycling. The model results at the end of cycling have been saved in one underscore seepage analysis.sav. To view the model results, FLAC2D has an advanced set of plotting tools. In this tutorial, two plots in addition to those plots already produced will be added. One, pore water pressures, and two, degree of saturation. The name of these two additional plots will be 5 underscore PP and 6 underscore saturation, respectively. Note when following the steps about to be shown in this video, maximum, minimum, and interval values may be specified. Each new plot is created by clicking the drop down arrow, then new, followed by plot. In the next step, the name of the plot can be specified. After clicking OK, look to the plot item list and then click the plus button and then select the option in the video. Alternatively, you can right click on the plot screen and then select add plot item. To save the creation of these plots, go to File and then Save Project. At this point, we shift to the two questions in the initial problem statement. One, the pore water pressure at a point located at x equals 140 feet and y equals 10 feet, and two, the water flow into the drain. First, let us determine the pore water pressure at a specific location. The pore water pressure near x equals 140 feet and y equals 10 feet can be quickly returned by presenting key information from this plot in the tools plane. To add the information box, select the Select Controls for Display icon, followed by clicking Information. An information box will be provided now in the tools plane that will present key information. Now with the 5 underscore pp plot live, Use the capabilities of the mouse tool to zoom near x equals 140 feet and y equals 10 feet. With the cursor hovering over the correct coordinate, the value presented in the information box is the calculated pore water pressure. This value presented is interpolated between the grid point values. If the desire is to return the average zone value or a grid point value, then click on the Show Detailed Information of Object in Plot icon or Control question mark, and then select the associated zone or grid point. For example, here, the pore water pressure will be reported for grid point 1075 as 2,562.33 pounds per feet squared. The 
We will now calculate the water flow leaving the embankment and entering the drain. To accomplish this, a short fish programming script will be developed. To begin, create a new data file called 3 underscore flow calculation dot dat. The fish script will be described next. These commands will be presented with customized syntax highlighting and figures to help connect FLAC2D commands to the analysis problem. As before, we begin by restoring the results at the end of the seepage analysis using the command model restore to underscore seepage analysis dot sav. Next, we define a fish function that begins with the statement fish define fine flow, where fine flow is the fish function name and ends with end. Within this fish function are two statements. The first statement locally stores a list of grid points that lie along base2 edge type group. The second statement globally stores the resulting flow in the variable flow underscore value as the sum of all nodal flows in the grid points that lie along base2. We are finished with defining the function find flow. To run the function find flow, the command square bracket find flow square bracket is used. Before finishing with the commands in the data file, the command model save 3 underscore flow calculation dot sav will be used to save the results. The set of commands discussed previously will now be shown in the data file in FLAC2D. Once the set of commands has been typed, click the green arrow or simply click Ctrl E. With the tool pane open, the value stored in variable flow underscore value is reported. Minus 3.71612 times 10 to the minus 7 cubic feet per second per feet, or 3.71612 times 10 to the minus 7 cubic feet per second per foot leaving the model. Before closing this analysis, resave the project, go to File and then Save Project. This completes the second step of our analysis, calculating the pore water pressures and water flow in the embankment due to the reservoir. In the next video, the final step in this three-part tutorial will be completed, updating the soil densities and recalculating the effective stresses in the model.